All right, so Jason, let me show you how the policy optimizer can help you spot those port 80 and 443 rules and then convert the app IDs out of the generic rule into more specific rules that involve app ID. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is jump over here to our policies tab. And if your policy window looks similar to mine, you're, you're in good company. And you probably did not notice the policy optimizer when you upgraded to PanOS 9.0 because it's right down here into this tiny little arrow. When you click it, he pops up here, policy optimizer. Surprise, policy optimizer here. <laughs> it's like one of those, you know, the toys that the kids have, you crank it and then like, it just like pops up, you know, whatever that scary. Anyway, so in the policy optimizer, I want to start looking at the no app specified section, right? So I have two rules in my policy. You probably are going to have thousands of rules or more in your policy that are based around ports or that at least in the application column have an any specified. That's what qualifies something to show up in this section. So it looks like it's actually showing the rules because you know this is rule number four and we're not seeing necessarily all the rules. It, it, it's sorting them based on the volume of traffic. Is that right? Exactly right. And, and you can adjust the sorting if you want. Like if I wanted to sort by the rules that have had the largest number of days without uh, you know, any new apps being seen, but to me, the rules that have transited the most traffic are the ones I should focus on first because yeah. they represent greater risk potentially to me. So let's right. keep this default sorting and let's go look at which app IDs have the firewall has seen uh, transit through this rule. So I'm gonna come here to compare and you can see that I've got all of these different rules and again, they're sorted by traffic volume. Let's now, change the sorting because we're going to start taking some of these app IDs out of this rule and putting them into their more specific rules. So to do this, I want to highlight subcategory and I want to sort, let's just go ascendingly. So the first thing that jumps out to me are some of these audio streaming apps. And if I scroll down a little bit to the V's, I've got some photo video apps. So I want to take those apps themselves and then group them into their own rule. You're already saving time. Just by being able to have this like almost an interactive report and then being able to take action through this interface. Uh, I mean, this is not a report, but the visibility it provides is like a report, but it's actionable, which is really amazing. Yeah, dynamic management. That's, that's a good point. So dynamic management, that's a good word. Right, just <laughs> top of my head right then. All right, so I'm gonna check these boxes. Oh, hang on. Do we use Kakao TV? We don't, uh, that's a Korean TV service and uh, we don't have any Korean employees or it's not a legitimate business case. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that one unchecked and I'll come back to it in a minute. Let's see, do I have any other RTM, RTMPT? That's one of the, the ones that is used to facilitate like iTunes and stuff like that. So let's come back here and grab some of these audio ones that our users say they use. All right, so I've got several apps selected. I'm gonna come down here and click a, or the button for create cloned rule. Now what's neat here is it's going to pop up and show you container app IDs that aren't themselves necessarily app IDs. For example, iTunes itself, this top guy here. This is a container that has inside of it or beneath it dedicated app IDs that the firewall can identify. So it saw this one in green, iTunes base. And if you wanted to fully allow all of the functions of iTunes, you should allow all of the other associated app IDs or you can pick just the top one and that would encompass all of the ones beneath it. Now, even if I select all three of these, the resulting security rule will just have this container app ID because it does contain the sub app IDs, one of which the firewall saw. So I'm gonna leave these defaults checked and we can go through and get a feel for, you know, what other uh, app IDs were in that same container. I'm good with what I see there. And then notice down here, it also wants to include dependency apps. Now, implicit apps won't be used or listed here, but th those that have to have a manual dependency satisfied will be shown here. Now, I've been managing firewalls for quite some time, and I'm gonna make a, a guess here that I will have multiple other app IDs that are also gonna be dependent on SSL and web browsing. So I don't wanna put SSL and web browsing into every single cloned rule I create. Uh, I may especially if I'm using you know, narrow destination addresses and maybe destination URL categories, but my rules are fairly generic at this point. So I'm gonna take these two out of the rule I'm gonna create 
and I will satisfy them with another rule I'll create a little bit lower in my policy set. So let's go ahead and give this a name and I'm just gonna call this online video dash audio. And that's the hardest there is, click okay. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but the number of apps seen just went down a tiny bit because if I come up here to security, here's that rule I just barely created with those app IDs that we saw just a second ago. Now, one thing the policy optimizer does not do, it can't read your mind, right? So it doesn't make other changes to the structure of that rule that was cloned, but you would probably want to come back through and make some changes like these services, okay? Do we wanna let Pandora happen over UDP 53? I don't know if it's even possible to happen, but for other app IDs, I definitely don't want to allow the possibility of an app ID to go through a port that's not associated with that app. So I'm gonna click in here and change this from these dedicated services back to application default, click okay, and now you see the rules been updated. Now, another thing that, that this is just Mitch's suggestion here, you may want to leave a breadcrumb for yourself to know which rules were created as a result of using the policy optimizer. So I'm gonna come over here to the objects tab and I wanna show you a tag that I had created moments ago called the policy optimized tag, give it whatever color you want and description. But the benefit here now is I can go back to my policy and then I can add that tag in just right here so that at my next iterative cycle of using the policy optimizer, I can see, ah, this rule came as a result of the policy optimizer. And if I want to add app IDs into that same rule in the future, I can do that. But it's a nice way to distinguish rules that were migrated from rules that have been optimized using the policy optimizer. That's freaky brilliant, Mitch. I, th this is fantastic because you're already just going through this process, helping folks understand that this is not mindless, policy optimizer is not magic, but at the same time, it really enables the firewall administrator to align the policy set to whatever sanctioned apps that they want to um, include. And by uh, eliminating the ones they don't want to include, they're just reducing that attack surface. And then the tagging thing, <laughs> that's, that's just brilliant.